Okay, and this will be available on our YouTube channel, Home Language Project. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen for you. And we can start. Okay. Okay. So how do word create? <laughs> um, obviously it's indigenous neologisms and a reclamation project because that is what the Homo language project is. It's a reclamation project of our language. And my name is Brittany Burden Jimenez. I'm Homa. My pronouns are she, her, they. I identify as a community language worker because like Adrian said, I took classes at Aldi, but I have no other formal training. Um, and I am a mom of two children. I am a wife. I'm a sister, auntie, friend to whoever. <laughs> so what's the Home Language Project? The Home Language Project is a citizen-led initiative. We are all volunteers. The project started in 2013 through Haley Dardar and Colleen Billiat, who are both members of the Homa, uh, United Homa Nation. And Homa is a Western Muscogean language. Um, in the Western Muscogee family. And there are about, I guess, four or five existing like spoken languages in that family. And I'll talk about that more later. Um, when the project started, all they had was a list of 80 words um, that some people recorded more, most specifically uh, John R. Swanton. He wrote about us and a lot of other indigenous tribes in the Mississippi Valley between 1907 and 1917. And aside from that 80 existing words, we had two songs um, that was part of it. Let me see if I can get the songs going for you. Ah, Appa. Oh. The Chonchuba one. I had it. <laughs> oh, I had it. Ah, Appa. Okay, so those songs um, are called the Chanchuba songs, which means alligator in our language, and in Choctaw, and I think Chickasaw too, because again, we're Western Muscogee language family. Um, that was from Greg Bowman. Um, the two women in those were Elvira Billiot and Valentine Dardar, which is kind of funny because a Dardar and a Billiot started the project in 2013. But that's pretty much all we had to go off of. And um, also some words that were still being used in um, Homa French, which is like a, a Spanglish version, if you will, of the indigenous language and French. So today, um, as of 2021, there are nine members. Uh, we have an archiving group that we just pretty much separated in within the last year that handles interviews from elders and other tribal members and things like that. And that's Haley Dardar, Rochelle Verdon, Alana Ojibwe. And in the language side of it, um, it's Colleen Billiot, me, Ida Aronson, Donnie Verdon, and then we have two linguists, Ben Wood, who's our main one, he's been since 2013, and the intern uh, linguist, Jack Rittenberry, and they've been a big help. So I added this meme because I thought it was pretty funny. So me think, why waste time? Say lot word when few word do trick. If you're not familiar with this show, it's called The Office. Um, this man in the scene, decided that he was going to be a lot more efficient in the way he spoke and break up English. <laughs> um, 
And I thought this was pertinent because sometimes English speakers, when they figure out our indigenous languages, don't exactly um, carry over well in translation. They think, oh, it's so like primitive, but I mean, it still gets the point across, doesn't it? It's not primitive, it's just different. So why would you add new words? Life changes. You need words for STEM, identities, familial connections, and emotions. Those change all the time. And cultural practices. Language evolves without permission. Um, and this is one of the things that we thought of a group uh, when we were deciding how we were going to um, make it accessible. And we, we had to look at, okay, so we're the first ones that are going to be speaking and writing it technically within a hundred years. So, so how can we um, make it so, you know, we are doing our work? And I want to show you um, this right here. It's Chuscampole Malata, which we made that word for internet, but it literally means lightning fast web. Um, did we, <laughs> we took like about an hour to figure out how we were going to do this and make it make sense. And um, it's a link, but I'll show you in a minute. Uh, the other basic word phrase list. And so I added this picture as well. Um, there's first written word, movable type, mass publication, email, Twitter, and tweet. Um, it's called the evolution of communication, but it's only one side of communication. I know a lot of um, people on both sides of tense, academics and non-academics, they think that we as a human race are devolving <laughs> in ways of, uh, that we communicate, but 140 characters is more than enough to get your point across. Um, and they left out oral communication, which is a lot of indigenous languages have not gone over to written language. They kept it the way it was uh, oral, or they had a different type of written communication. So what's in the process? Our process was to understand current word constructions, like verb construction, um, to understand how to add to your language, you have to understand how your language is. Um, Homa is very verb heavy, as are um, pretty common in most of the West, Western Muscogee language family. Um, and then we had to look at orthography. We wanted to, we asked ourselves, do we want it simple for the sake of getting people to learn? Because um, if you want simplicity, that takes out a lot of meaning from your language. Um, and did we want it synonymous to our dominant language? Our dominant language was English, but about 50 years ago, the dominant language in our part of Louisiana was French. So we had to decide too, like, do we want it to kind of sound like French? Do we want it to just be modernized? What? And will it be written? Like I said, um, a lot of indigenous languages are oral. We had people write down our language several times before. John Swanton wasn't the only one. So we kind of already had that, you know, it was already cases where it's written. It wasn't with our permission. It was just people writing it down just to record it for record's sake. So, um, and a lot of our people, the home of people are scattered throughout six parishes in Louisiana and then globally, like I'm in Texas, um, two, um, two member, three members are in Southern Louisiana in different cities. And there's one in DC, there's one in California, et cetera. So we had to figure out like I said, we were the guinea pigs. We had to figure out how we were gonna communicate to, with each other with this language. And we had to get creative. Um, we decided to keep it Roman characters just for the sake of like keyboard accessibility. A lot of our people are um, elderly and do not understand how to switch keyboards. We wanted to make it accessible as possible without taking away the integrity of the language. Um, but like the Cherokee, the Cherokee has symbols themselves and um, other languages. So it doesn't have to be 
written and English characters. You know, you could do however you want. So I wanted to show you our orthography. So here's some of the basic phrases I was talking about. Um, so we have computer, which literally means rock brain, um, calculator, something to count with. A lot of uh, these words Choctaw already has, so we decided to keep it. So we didn't reinvent the wheel, like for car, they had ka. Um, and so we had light, light bulb, they had that already. Um, vacuum cleaner, <laughs> you know, like simple things, but it took so long for us to figure out how we were going to define it, like something to suck up dirt with or mop, something to wipe or scour with. Um, let's see, and then we had like some funny phrases. So take this, Esepa, was something that um, Haley wanted to translate for my son one day. He's playing video games. He's like, take this, pow, 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 you know? Um, and then you are trash, <laughs> you know, just messing with each other and having fun. But because um, we didn't have any um, insults in our language and we decided we didn't really want to translate cuss words, but like, like I said, 140 characters, you can translate a lot, you can communicate a lot. So it doesn't have to mean, you know, it doesn't have to have a whole bunch of words. Um, but Cheyulele, I love you. We had Happy Valentine's Day, we posted on our Facebook page. Um, Mardi Gras stuff, uh, single and snagging. We did a TikTok about that, a funny TikTok. Um, Father's Day, and then even with Hurricane Ida, we put out on our Facebook page, beware of the hurricane, um, buy gas, protected plants, category one, category two, which we didn't really have um, words for like hurricane. We had um, big wind, I think was one of the definitions. And that's really where um, the Mississippi Choctaw, people in the Mississippi Choctaw um, tribe came in to help like Sam Mingo and, um, Jason Bright, Star Lewis, and even the Chickasaw, Joshua Henson, he's helped us a lot too. Let me see. And then here is our comparison sheet. So I want to show this to you. Oops, let me move that out the way. Okay. So right in the beginning, we decided that we wanted to, for, um, posterity and for uh, making sure that we we're like actually you know staying within the confines of western Muskogee languages not really confines but just making sure that we're on the right track that it's going to make sense because that was one of the deals too we wanted to make sure that um, we help repair the relationships with our sister tribes and that our relatives would be able to talk with us and kind of understand we can converse and things. So we have the HOMA list. This is the original 80 word list that I was talking about. And then we have columns for Choctaw, Chickasaw, Alabama, Kowasati, and even the trade language, the movability trade jargon. And then here are the English definitions. So um, we also did this for um, seeing how it was spelled too. Because Swanton, he didn't really have a very, um, what you call it? <laughs> Some of his um, words, like for long vowels and things like that, weren't across the board. So we had to figure out, do we want to keep it this way or not? Um, we have on this sheet also, we have our rules and decisions to keep track which just hadn't been updated since 2019. There are plenty more, there's other sheets too, but I wanted to show you, um, we decided how our vowels were pronounced, special characters. We had rules like I is only used in place of E after N, K is used in place of G because the G sound and T and D. And we have that extended over here too. T at the beginning words, T elsewhere. So um, while we're writing it, 
we're, we're writing our language. If it's a word that starts with T, then if it doesn't have a, um, if it doesn't have a suffix on it, I think we use D. So like the Choctaw word for uh, two, ours would be the chin with a D. We also looked at uh, nasal vowel symbols at the end of, uh, end of the syllable. So syllables that end in N are just, you know, we ask ourselves, are they gonna be nasal vowels? Are we gonna put a glottal stop at the end of vowels that end the sentence? And we even change our orthography to say, hey, we're gonna break up some consonants um, like Nia, Nia, uh, Falaya. You know, we broke up the Y right here and then even in here in Kalaya. So we use Y in a place of um, the L and I in different places. Okay, and also morphine boundaries. That took a lot of work too. Um, so we started mainly in 2019 putting this all together um, and that took a few months. It took us about the whole year, I think, to do all of this because um, we met all, it was always virtual and we had a like, I guess two, two, three hours a week. I know we have three hours a week now that we meet virtually to try and teach this all back to us. So you can see right here, um, we have the Choctaw, Chipesalitok, Chipesalitok, So we have it all together separated and then dashes to represent the morphine boundaries. And we took from the Choctaw workbook that we were working on that year, a passage, and then we put it in the Homa orthography and decided, okay, are we going to write it with dashes to express morphine boundaries? Are we gonna keep it all together? I think even once we, oops, I'm sorry, once, uh, we even thought of doing like apostrophes. So what we decided seeing this, uh, because our words can get really long, <laughs> we were adding things, taking things out. We decided we'll just teach the dashes whenever we're teaching someone and then just have it, you know, off. We're just gonna have to remember <laughs> pretty much. So, um, so yeah. Um, for language isolates that might not be as helpful for you, but even in um, the New Orleans area, Mississippi Valley, um, there are some languages like Tunica and Atakapa Ishak and Chittimacha that they share words. You know, Atakapa Ishak, for one, Atakapa is Choctaw for man eater, and they decided to keep that in there. Um, but like just mobile and trade jargon itself, uh, there were words from Spanish and French, and that was after colonization. Before colonization, it was mainly Choctaw um, based, but it had words from even Algonquin languages. So just because your language doesn't have a language family doesn't mean it wouldn't be worth looking um, into languages or cultures from around you. Okay, so what do you think about our process? Do you think we could have done something better? Because um, we're still working at it. We're still finding what fits and what doesn't fit in our decisions. So these decisions that we've made are not um, definite. They're not written in stone. So we have to maintain a um, atmosphere of creativity and flexibility. Have y'all done something similar? Um, are you working on something now? Does this help you? And do y'all have any advice or suggestions for us? Let us know. Thank you. All right, thank you, Britt. Um, before anybody um, responds, I guess just let, as to, once again, um, note that this is a space to elevate the voices of indigenous peoples um, in, in a sense of, they're sharing information and knowledge um, with each other so that we can learn from each other. Um, so definitely wanna make sure that they get heard first <laughs> uh, and foremost. Um, all right, and I have a couple of hands raised. Um, I, so I think it's Omo, um, I'm sorry, I mispronounced that. 
Yeah, hello everyone. Um, yeah, I'm Omo Yuba. I'm speaking from Nigeria. Uh, I'm a journalist, I'm an anthropologist, and I'm also the founder of Yoba Mojua Cultural Heritage. It's an organization in Nigeria that preserves, revitalizes, and promotes the indigenous Yoruba language of West Africa. And Brit, you've actually done a great presentation. And I, I must really commend uh, the great work you and your colleagues have put into this project. So I would like to um, add something to what you said about um, the neologism, the creation of new words. Because back here in Nigeria, I'm a member of the Nigerian Institute of Translators and Interpreters. So since 2018, we've been working on coining new terminologies for our language. So we've been coining new terminologies for our languages, which is Yoruba, Igbo, Awusa, and other Nigerian languages. And one of the um, um, techniques used here in Nigeria is to use that's prefix and suffixes. Because most of the root words, most of the, um, yes, the root words in our languages have already been created. So when we try to coin new words, we just add few um, alphabets to the beginning, to the middle, or to the end. For instance, um, there's a term in Yoruba um, language, which is Ori, which stands for head. So when we are trying to create a new words that is similar to anything that has head in it, we can just add a prefix or a suffix to it. For instance, when you want to see um, Computer, computer uh, is um, error ayarabiasha. So if you want to say a laptop, which is a computer you put on your laps, you put error ayarabiasha agbeleton. So the eton is the lap, agbele is placed on the lap. So my suggestion is when you are trying to coin your words, affixation helps a lot. Thank you. Great, thank you for, thank you, Omo. Um, anyone else? Yes, thank you for sharing. There's a question in the chat. Uh, what's your process of spreading the new words among the speakers and how do you make sure the speakers understand and accept the neologisms, the new words? So um, we really don't have a specific process of spreading new words among speakers because right now the HLP team are technically the only speakers. Um, we do TikTok videos saying different things like I shared in um, the basic phrases sheet, like having downtown stay, things like that, real short phrases for people to learn and get used to the rhythm of the language. Um, and that's also why I mentioned earlier that we kind of decided to stick with some French sounds in there uh, because of home of French is more, um, it's had a longer history um, and recent history, in our recent history, than the pure indigenous language. Um, so we'll do that. We'll do TikTok videos. We'll share on Facebook, and we have a YouTube. Um, and really, we hadn't had any problems with accepting new words um, because right now this is the only orthography that really exists, and so it's the only thing that they know. Um, we have asked. Um, a few times for different things, kind of like um, for like gender inclusive um, phrases and identities. We've asked us, um, our community if they had any ideas, you know, specific people. Um, and we've made a dictionary for them to get familiar with the words and that's accessible. Um, and we're working on a um, mobile app um, for them to learn. But yeah, there's really been no problem so far of anybody 
not like it, except for once when we did like um, a Black Lives Matter <laughs> thing, and that wasn't because they didn't like the word, because it was a political issue. So really, that's only been the problem so far. But uh, if y'all have any um, suggestions on how to um, spread new words among the speakers, I'm all ears. But yeah, it's basically just been virtual for right now. Uh, there's a response to that. Um, so Omo shared what they do is create a forum for linguists to debate, check and balance the terms. Um, also use social media for engagement around the new words. Um, great. Yeah. So uh, if anyone has any other ways or other other experiences that they have tried or other to get to make sure that these new words are spread out within the community of speakers and yes. Anyone else? So Josh notes in Chickasaw, what's get used is what sticks. High frequency used by learners bleeds into native speakers speech. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We had the, um... We had to make sure that we all understood that too in the group that even though we have this a certain way what we're really wanting is for them to take it and make their own um, um because our people aren't going to use it unless they can use it in their everyday life and how it suits them you know <laughs> so we yeah we want people to do that we want them to take it and make slang words and stuff because if they do if it's a high frequency way of using it, then it's gonna be used and it's gonna survive. Um, we had to make sure that everyone was okay with it, um, saying like, we're not trying to change anything. We're just trying to like make it okay to use and easy and accessible, whatever. Um, Cause we're not through the tribe. We're not through the United Home Nation. Like I said, we're a citizen led volunteer group. Um, so we had to make sure people understood that because if they think that, if they thought that the tribe was doing it without people say, then they would have gotten angry and upset obviously for not having a say in it. But um, because we're volunteers and led, people are a lot more open to um, our offers of this language in any capacity. Great, um, so Nicole shared we have a website that an outside org created, which put together a lot of the words that we've made between our various immersion schools, we share word lists. That's where the most new words are made. So my question with that, um, what is meant by put together a lot of the words that we've made? Is that just, do you mean just by displaying them? Or, and yeah, I don't, I'm not sure what's meant by that. And then, Yeah, so the I guess with the shared word list, is there a committee that meets to decide on these ones to share? Or how would that work? I could share. Um, so we have a language institute where for many years we had neologism classes put together with our fluent speakers and learners. And I know our situation is a lot different because we do have fluent speakers. So um, it might not be as helpful, but the outside, this outside org helped with that. And we have a website that I could share as well where um, everything's sortable, but we haven't had those classes in a while and that hasn't been updated for a while, but our immersion schools are still continuing. In our immersion schools, there's some in South Dakota, some in North Dakota, some in Minnesota um, that have fluent speakers within them. And it's kind of like what somebody said, who, the high frequency is what sticks and they get, our new words get used a lot in the immersion schools. And so we have an informal uh, Facebook messenger group where we often say like, how do you say gopher or something like that? And then some people will say, oh, well, this is what we use at our school, you know? So there's nothing official on that end, um, but that's kind of how the immersion schools have been. They've never been super official. They've been outside the tribe, similar to what she was saying. Um, so that there's not that like oversight by the tribe and we could kind of do what we want to move the language forward, um, which has worked really well for us. So we kind of do that with our new words too between immersion schools because there are fluent speakers involved and advanced language learners. So that just, um, then we, um, we haven't really shared those with the broader community much 
because we don't really have a place to do that, but I think that's probably our next step. Thanks. Great, thank you for sharing, Nicole. Um, okay, anyone else? Well, I just wanted to say real quick that, um, yeah, the immersion, we're waiting to do that. That's actually why I went to um, the Aldi summer session and Adrian was my one of my professors, one of my instructors. Um, but yeah, I took the virtual immersion for indigenous communities and I'm so excited to try. <laughs> like I was supposed to um, do it on our group and like practice with our groups and stuff, but then a hurricane hit. Um, so that put us back even more uh, because our tribal center was really, really damaged. Um, because we were hoping that probably within the next two years or so that we could, you know, have immersion lessons um, there. But uh, yeah, even though we would have it in the tribal center, like uh, we would probably open it up for the broader community only because um, we had problems with our um, roles enrollment and stuff and so that was another thing that we had to decide too that we wanted to be open for all people of home of descent because I have a brother and a sister that's not enrolled in the tribe just because my dad was lazy <laughs> so and forgot to do it so uh, we don't want to punish any of our people uh, because they're not on paper as a homeless citizen you know um, so yeah, that's another good reason why we decided not to be in for the tribe, like not be under the tribe's wing, um, not because of any bad stuff going on, just because we want to be able to say, hey, look, this is uh, for citizens by citizens, and if you have ancestry, if you know, if you are a home of person, then this is for you too. You live in North Carolina, that's fine. I live in Texas. Come on, <laughs> you know, we'll get on Zoom and do a session. Anyone else have any comments or questions? Um, so they're sharing, um, Oma worked with, um, I guess a localization lab to create tech terminologies and then wrote a blog to promote the project. This helped in spreading the word. Great, thank you for sharing. Um, anyone else have any suggestions, advice, or any maybe questions of their own regarding their own language work? Uh, Samuel, I see hand raised, go, go for it. I've, I've, uh, I'm sorry, just cut out a little bit your audio. Uh, I'll, 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 it's going in and out, like it starts strong and then it fades. Oh, Sam, are you just typing it? <laughs> Glad to see you're here, though. Thank you for coming. Yeah, that's who I mentioned earlier, Sam, though. He is in the Mississippi Choctaw uh, community, and he helped us a lot in the beginning, too, and still helps us every now and then and um, has a good mm -hmm. relationship with us. I appreciate him. Okay. So, yes, uh, he typed in the text. Um, Brian, so they went into is the dictionary. Um, it doesn't give context. How did you, you manage to find the, out the context for the appropriate word use? So um, we actually got the 2016 New Choctaw Dictionary, which came out of Oklahoma, um, to use that and cross-referenced with um, Byington um, Dictionary. Oh, real quick, Nicole, we don't have a certain uh, like home language project TikTok. It's just like mine and another person's um, TikTok stuff. But um, if you go to our home language project on Facebook and home language project on YouTube, those uh, videos are uploaded there too. You can find that all in one place. Um, anyway, um, the dictionary, yes. So uh, we got the 2016 New Choctaw Dictionary that Oklahoma put out, and then um, Byington's 1916, 
dictionary, I think. Cyrus Byington. Um, we did those and also cross referenced with um, words that we were able to find in a uh, Mississippi Choctaw um, um, portion on their website and through Sam and um, Jason Brightstar Lewis, and even with the words that we had. So um, it took a long time. <laughs> that was part of the language comparison stuff. Uh, too, that we had to make sure that, okay, these words that exist that are um, shared between these languages that we have the right thing. And then also through several linguists um, as well, like um, David Kaufman, who's on the call right now, on here right now, um, Aaron Broadwell, and I can't remember, there's a lot of people. We, yeah, the context wasn't right there for us in a lot of um, words. So, yeah, we had to do a lot of research. Um, Pam Monroe helped us a lot. Um, yeah, just research, research, research. <laughs> that's all it is. And um, yeah, it's still, um, that's why I like when we uploaded our dictionary to Google Play, um, to the Google Play Store, it's still available for revisions and things like that. And we expect to come across some words that don't quite make sense, um, some errors and things. So, like I said, we have to be available for flexibility, and that's one of the things. The dictionary is not written in stone. It can be changed if we find errors in it, because everything, um, you know, we're human. We're not computers, so there's going to be an error. So, yeah. Yes, I can. Let me get that real quick. Um, but it's on the Google Play Store. We don't have it for I, iPhone compatibility. That's because um, if we did it through still, um, the Southern Institute of Languages, I can't remember exactly what it stands for right now. I'm drawing a blank, but um, they only do Android. And so that's the only, um, that's the only way that we can do it right now because Android is for most of the world. It's just the US who are in love with their iPhones. <laughs> Okay, anyone else have any or wanted to share about their own or ask any other questions or give advice? Um, okay, I'm putting the links, I guess this is kind of like a quick feedback form, hopefully. As I mentioned, we'll try to get more of these community-led, uh, community member-led discussions. Um, yes, and Uma just pointed out that the International Decade of Indigenous Languages will begin next year, starting in 2022. Um, Yeah. Okay, anyone else have any um, questions or advice? Or want to share about their own work? Regarding indigenous new artwork creation? Okay, well, um, I guess that would be it then. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us today. Hopefully it was helpful. And if not, at least that you found the space nice or at least <laughs> something new and different. Um, and as Marty mentioned, this will be shared online through her page. And yeah. Yep, I'm put the links in there for um, the downloadable Homo Language Project Dictionary. I have our website, which is homolanguageproject.com and then the YouTube channel that we have and also um, Homo Language Project on Facebook. So if y'all wanna stay up to date with us, uh, you can. We um, 
we haven't posted a lot on Facebook <laughs> in a while. Um, that's just because we're steady working. Um, but yeah, we uh, also have Twitter and Instagram under the same name and y'all can find us and message us and whatever. We're, um, we're always open to um, speaking with our indigenous, indigenous relatives and anyone working in linguistics that would love to help. We love uh, to hear and we love to share our work. Um, but yeah, thank y'all for coming. I really appreciated it. And um, I hope to see more great things from everybody. Um, because, you know, when one succeeds, we all succeed. So I'm rooting for y'all too. And I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Britt. That was, I mean, we thank you so much for sharing and for your work and for everyone for joining us today. And yes, Nicole, I agree. Like just, I'm, this is what we're trying to do in terms of just having a space for language community members or, you know, not necessarily academics um, um, to discuss and share their language work and uh, just, have this space uh, to provide the space. Um, so yes, um, thank you for joining and we hope you have a good day.